time now for the big story. And it's been revealed that UK companies are now looking to foreign workers because managers have found it so difficult to attract British staff. The economist Max Mosley told The Telegraph newspaper that international workers are propping up the labour market. More than nine million people of working age have quit the jobs market. And the number of companies registering to become sponsors to hire overstaff see, uh, staff overseas, I should say, has doubled in the past two years. Meanwhile, the Times newspaper report that the Home Office is facing unprecedented demand for work visas before the rise in the minimum salary threshold in April. 169,000 work visas were offered last year. So whilst the debate rages about current levels of legal net migration, last year almost 700,000 people, is immigration good or bad for Britain? Well, politics professor and best-selling author Matthew Goodwin, who is the author of one of the UK's biggest substacks at MatthewGoodwin.org, always a must-read. Well, I'm say, delighted to say that Matthew Goodwin joins me now. Matthew, good to good see to you in the studio. You, um, you're going to be hosting a major live debate about this on the 18th of March. We'll get I the am. details yeah. in a moment. But in short, what's your view? Is immigration good or bad for the country? Well, the kind of immigration that we have now, mass immigration, low skill immigration, low wage migration, I think is bad for Britain. Uh, you remember the 2019 general election, Boris Johnson said we're going to get high skill, high wage, highly selective uh, migration, which is going to drive productivity, drive innovation. Australian points based system. The Australian based points, uh, points system. What we got actually was, was the opposite of that. Uh, the Conservatives I would argue, really failed on migration. And what they've given us is, is an economy that is really based, Mark, on lots of low-skill, low-wage migration from outside of Europe. Now, if you look at the latest studies that have been done, the University of Amsterdam in Denmark, Sweden, they all say the same thing. The kind of migration that we are now dependent upon mm. takes more out of the economy than it puts into the economy. So that's why I'm arguing that this kind of mass migration is bad for Britain. And also, fundamentally, Mark, it's not just about what it adds or takes away from the economy. It's bad for the country in terms of pressure on public services. It's worsening the housing crisis. Almost all of the evidence recently um, shows that quite clearly. And culturally, I think it just makes people feel very anxious about the direction of society. How are we going to hold this country together when we're going through this scale of change at this speed? And I think that's why many people, I think, watching this show will be thinking, something's not right here. What about that well-established correlation between a growing economy and a rising population? Yeah, so it's interesting. We just had the latest economic data and, you know, the argument, you have more people, you have more GDP. I mean, that's basically how it works. But GDP per head, productivity per person is actually going down. Now, why is that happening? One reason, I would argue, is because we are basically now in an era where we've got mass immigration for the next 20, 30 years built into the forecast. It's the wrong kind of migration. It's not productive migration. It's basically low wage workers coming in to keep big business happy, to keep their profit margins high, to keep labor costs low and to keep consumption high. But it's not actually generating good, robust, meaningful growth. So what I'm saying we need is a completely different kind of conversation about immigration in this country. Because mm. to be frank, most people out there in the country, not the people watching this show, they're clued into politics, they know what's going on. Most people out there haven't even figured out what's going on in the country at the moment. And that's why we're having this big debate. Why have the Conservatives allowed this to happen? Because that was the promise of Brexit, wasn't it? Control of our borders, of sort of that, you know, ties in with stopping the boats and illegal immigration. But the implication of Brexit is that overall migration numbers would drop. Why have the Tories let this happen? To be honest, Mark, it's because the Conservatives don't really understand who's voting for them today. And the Conservative Parliamentary Party leans much further to the cultural left mm. than the average voter. So they're basically comfortable with legal migration. Look, I've been at, at, at this level. I've been at dinners with cabinet ministers. And what they'll mm. say to you is the real issue is the boats, stopping the boats. Well, actually... We've had 112,000 people come into the country on the small boat since 2018, which is way too high. It's a joke. We should leave any international convention that stops us from controlling Including our own borders. Including the ECHR? I would argue mm. that we should. But 112,000 is nothing compared to the 1.2 million people who came in via legal migration routes over the last two years. How many of those came to work? About 15 percent. The rest were students, relatives of students, the relatives of workers or asylum seekers, migrants coming in on humanitarian routes. So, look, some immigration is good. 
High skill immigration is good. Migration that genuinely benefits the NHS, fine. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is this model of mass migration based on low skill, low wage migration from outside of Europe, which is weakening, not strengthening British society. Is there a case for a five year pause on all immigration in order for Britain's infrastructure, housing, transport, school places, NHS capacity to recover, to catch up? Yeah, well, my argument would be that somehow we need to break this elite consensus. So we've, both, we've got both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, and I'd also add big business, committed to ongoing mass migration for the future. Just look at the forecast from the Office for Budget Responsibility and others. They are now assuming we're going to have at least net, mi uh, net migration of at least 300,000 each year going forward. So we need to break this. Maybe we should have a three to five year break on migration and say, let's just absorb the mass migration of the last 20 years. Or maybe let's have a referendum. Let's see what the British people want uh, in terms of net migration. And I would argue what they want is net migration maybe of between 50,000 and 100,000 a year, not 700,000 a year. I think the average British voter mark is out there thinking, I accept we need some migration. We have an aging population. Mm. We need to keep things like the NHS and so on ticking over. But I think people are looking at these numbers. It's, here's another number. Over the next 12 years, we're going to have 6.6 .6 million people added to this country. 6.1 million of those will be because of migration. So what does that mean? We're going to have five, what, what is equivalent to five cities the size of Birmingham or 70% of the way to another London in 12 years, Mark. So that's currently what we're going to see based on officials, official forecasts from the Office for National Statistics. Somebody in government needs to get their arms around this issue and... Firstly, somebody needs to answer this question. If mass migration is so good for Britain, if it's so good for the economy, why is our growth so slow? And why is GDP per head a key measure? Why is it so weak? Because we've had mass migration for 20 years. Nobody in the Treasury or government seems to be able to answer my question. Why are we seeing this weak economy after 20 years of mass migration if it is a silver bullet that we're often told it is. Uh, why are the political left so pro-immigration, given that unsustainable levels often impact poorer communities the greatest? I think it's a great question. I think the left views immigration as a luxury belief. It's an issue they use to project their sense of moral righteousness, their virtue. But you're absolutely right, Mark. I mean, Robert Putnam, one of the world's most esteemed professors, has shown this in in countries that experience large-scale migration, which are very diverse, levels of trust are lower. And you also get a big pressure on the welfare system because people become less willing to pay tax into, into the collective pot because they don't really know who they're supporting through the welfare system. You know, why is it, for example, that the British taxpayer should be happy to pay money into the collective pot while also seeing things like the protests after October 7th or, you know, criminal gangs in London or Abdul Azidi running around the country, uh, you know, pouring acid over a poor family, even though he was already a convicted sex offender? I think the British people have a very strong sense of fair play. And I think what they feel now is that that, that principle of fair play is consistently being violated, not just by illegal migrants and so on, but actually by their leaders, by people who are supposed to put the British people before illegal migrants in a system that's clearly broken. Well, Matthew, stay with us. Let me bring in my top pundits into this conversation. Annunciata Rees Mogg, Andy MacDonald and Neil Parrish. Andy, uh, what do you think is a sensible number for legal net migration annually? I, th I think it'd fluctuate every year. You know, uh, uh, at the moment in construction, we are lacking 50,000 skilled workers. So, you know, if you look at construction, we need more migrants because realistically, the education system pushes people towards universities rather than learning a trade. So in construction, we need more migrants. But then if you, you know, you look at hospitality, you'd need more migrants. But then if you look at the police service, you'd need less migrants. So, you know, there are challenges across different industries. But, but Andy, why, why, why can't, why can't we get uh, Brits to do these jobs? I, because we've got an education system that tries to over-intellectualise and push people into academia.
Mm. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then they'll turn out like Matthew Goodwin. That could be, it could be worse. Uh, what do you think about this, Neil Parrish? Uh, your reaction to what Matthew Goodwin's had to say? Do you think immigration is good for Britain? I mean, I think what Matthew says in principle is absolutely right. That the problem is in, in practice that since sort of COVID, we've had, what, millions of workers not come back into the workplace. And so, you know, I mean, the government get land basted uh, for too much migration, but they would also get land basted if there was nobody to care for the NHS, nobody to, to work in the care home. So we rely far too much on migrant labour. I, I get that entirely. But we do have to do something about our training systems and making sure that people will, can do those jobs. But, you know, you take um, having workers to pick vegetables and fruit. We do need, but albeit they come in on a temporary basis. Um, those are, are very much needed because when we try to get local workforce, almost impossible. So, I mean, it, it's a, a great principle, but if you talk to a lot of the employers and perhaps they, they bring in migration labour too easily, I accept that. But you'll find okay. very difficult to employ sometimes our own workers. So, it's not quite as simple uh, as the principle okay. of it. Uh, Annunciata, I mean, many would argue we do have an ageing population, we need young blood, plus we are a country that's always welcomed people from overseas. You know, in the past few years, Years. You've had Ukrainians, people from Hong Kong coming to this country, uh, Syrians as well. And the point is that if immigration came down to zero, the NHS would probably collapse overnight. We can't afford to keep running the NHS, the care system, our farming or anything else as a Ponzi scheme. Mm. And just constantly bringing in new workers to feed the uh, top end payouts is never going to be sustainable. We would have to keep growing this country ad finitum. We'd have to be adding a Birmingham every few months. We cannot do it. We cannot justify doing it for the people who are already here and we don't have the space or the wherewithal to be able to. Uh, it would also you, fundamentally be the wrong Matthew, thing to do. But both of my fellow panellists are correct that we completely need to change our training system. Okay. We need to put money into training our own doctors so that we're not stealing the brightest okay. and the best from other countries, but that we're bringing on our own. The other side of that is that this is having a massive uh, effect on wages, that they are constantly under pressure from importing cheaper foreign labourers meaning that it's not even often worthwhile our own people doing the jobs okay. because they can be undercut. We need to restructure the economy so that we actually train and rely on British workers for British jobs. Well, we can agree on that. Uh, brilliant stuff. Let me tell you that Matthew Goodwin's Substack is one of the most popular in the country. Uh, regular articles about the state of our politics uh, and it's a uh, Substack. You can be found at mattgoodwin.org. So head over there, mattgoodwin.org for the Substack. And the debate at hand is, is immigration good for Britain? Well, Matthew will be debating this alongside Constantine Kissin, Polly Toynbee and Aaron Bastani on the 18th of March at 7pm at the Emmanuel Centre in London. Tickets available via Eventbrite. My thanks to Professor Matthew Goodwin.